I'm your new host of College Late Night, Kayvana Parker. This is our very first episode and I'm really excited about the show. Basically, we'll be coming to you every Wednesday night talking about college issues, college life, and current issues going on in the world. Check out our Facebook page, College Late Night, thumbs up, and also go to our YouTube page, College Late Night number 11. College Late Night 11. All right? So let's start with the big stories. How about Kim Kardashian? She's divorced if you haven't yet heard. Yeah, her marriage only lasted about 72 days. Her father-in-law, Bruce Jenner, is completely devastated. But no one can tell because his Botox <laughs> injections have lasted longer than the marriage. In other celebrity news, a woman in California has filed a paternity suit against Justin Bieber, saying they hooked up after one of his concerts around a year ago. The baby is three months old, so you do the math. Her story is that Justin brought her backstage, took her to the bathroom because he's classy, and then told her he wanted to lose his virginity to her. Really, really bad. She then went on to say that when they were finished, she had to wipe him down, burp him, and rock him to sleep. A new study has come out that shows that kids who watch SpongeBob SquarePants are more likely to get ADD or have short-term memory loss than kids who watch PBS cartoons. In related news, the filmmaker Michael Moore is in production of making a documentary on exposing the food industry and the negative health effects on eating Krabby Patties. I told my brother that SpongeBob is not allowed in my house anymore. In superhero news, is anyone here a Batman fan? I love Batman. Well, last week, they were shooting the latest film, The Dark Knight Rises, in New York, but kept getting interrupted by the Occupy Wall Street protesters. The makers of the film asked the people if they could quietly protest somewhere else peacefully. They all listened and left. So let me get this straight. The 99% have been fighting for months against the 1%. The weather, starvation, police brutality, getting arrested and being put on trial for all their, but no one wants to fight Batman? I think that writers made the right decision. This Occupy Wall Street movement is getting out of hand, if you ask me. It has branched all over the country. Recently, the movement reached Oakland and, get, and got very violent. People were shot, hit by cars, and then writers destroyed a whole food store. Apparently, the writers were tired of paying $16 for bottled water. If Oakland really wanted to do some damage, they should have destroyed the Oakland Raiders. In other sports news, have you heard about the NBA lockout? The players are disputing with the owners on many topics. A lot of games have already been canceled. Most people think the entire upcoming season is going to be lost. Some players have already signed with other teams in other countries um, while they wait for the NBA to reopen. Kobe Bryant says that he's considering playing overseas. He said that he's doing research right now. His research consists of finding out which country has the most maids in their hotels. I'll need him to get it together. A woman in Des Moines, Iowa, burnt down another woman's house because she defriended her on Facebook. The woman updated her status before she went on trial and said, going to jail for a few, BRB. In Florida, the owners of a Domino's pizza store burnt down a Papa John's to have less competition. Afterwards, he realized that the much easier way to make more pizza sales is to stop working at Domino's. A 10-year-old pulled a 9mm gun on a woman while trick-or-treating. I guess she didn't give him enough candy for his liking. 50 Cent heard this story and decided to make a movie on it. He's calling it Get Candy or Die Trying. A nude couple was arrested for drug possession and giving their dog LSD, covered gummy worms. The dog didn't know which was scarier, seeing his owners naked or the giant purple dragon in the corner of the room. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you guys are really excited about the show like I am. And on to our next segment. Hello and welcome to Gaming Nexus, your link to the gaming multiverse. I'm your host, Jeff. This week we'll take a look at Epic's new game, Gears of War 3. We will discuss the latest news in the Minecraft universe and some information on Mass Effect 3's multiplayer co-op, as well as fill you in on some games you should keep an eye out for. Gears of War 3 is Epic's grand finale to the Gears of War franchise. The series is a third-person shooter with a cover-based combat system. It has been a great franchise in the past, 
and this ins installment is no disappointment. The story revolves around Marcus Phoenix, a soldier for the Coalition of Ordered Governments, or COG for short. This time around, Marcus and the rest of Delta Squad, including some new members, are trying to reach Marcus's father, who is believed to be long dead. The story overall is excellent and has some surprises and plot twists along the way. The voice acting of the game is just as good as ever. All of your favorite voices are back, including Lester Spate as Augustus Cole, also known as the Cole Train. Ah! The train still got the moves, baby! Many of the characters have very memorable lines that you will be saying with your friends for the next couple of weeks. All the sound effects sound incredible, and the sound of the torque bone planting into your chest always stops my heart, along with the sound of a head exploding that always puts a smile on my face. The graphics this time around are some of the best out there right now. All of your favorite COG soldiers are more detailed than they have ever been before. In this installment, things are looking a bit grim as their armor is mostly torn up and most of the COGs seem to be out of steam. However, Delta Squad still pushes on. All the locusts look more savage this time around and are a nice break from the more prominent exploding Lamet enemies. All the different forms of Lamet look really cool and incredibly creepy at the same time. Multiplayer features all the classic modes and some improved new ones, such as Team Deathmatch and Beast Mode. Team Deathmatch is a newly formatted player against player fight to the death. Each team is given a number of times they are allowed to respawn. Your goal is to deplete your enemy's respawns and kill them off before they get to you. Another new mode is the addition of Beast Mode. Beast Mode allows you to play the other side of the story, allowing you to take control of the locusts such as Boomers, Takers, and the rest while trying to take out the COG soldiers controlled by the game. This incredible finale to the Gears of War series includes some innovations that will influence video games for the next generation. This game receives a 9 out of 10. Now flipping over to the news in the multiverse of gaming, first up on the list is Marcus Notch Person is going to introduce the addition of dragons to Minecraft. These winged beasts will be flying across the land within the next few updates. Pictures of the dragons were first shown through Notch's Twitter, untextured, flying over the Minecraft landscape. He also announced that the game will be receiving weekly updates up until its November 11th release. Next on the list is the news of Mass Effect 3 multiplayer-based co-op. It will feature a wave-based multiplayer much like the Gears of War series Horde mode or the Halo series Firefight mode, where players will be able to create their own characters. They will be able to control appearance, race, character class, and on a wave-to-wave -wave basis, weapon loadout. This game is just months away and I personally can't wait to get my hands on it. There are some games coming out soon that you should really keep your eyes out for, such as Bat Batman Arkham City, which, is, which was released on October 18th. This highly anticipated sequel to the popular game Batman Arkham Sound features beat-em-up style combat allowing you to use combo attacks to take down your enemies, or you can sneak around and take them out with stealth. The most anticipated game coming out this year is Skyrim, being developed by Bethesda. This game is due, at, due to release November 11th. This game features first and third person medieval style combat in the mountainous region of Tamriel, Skyrim. Skyrim allows you to do whatever you wish in the expansive environment, allowing you to go anywhere you can see. That's all for this week on Gaming Nexus. Link back up next time for all you need to know about the gaming universe. Next time, I'm gonna wear pants. Welcome back to College Late Night. I'm really excited about today because I have my friend here, Desmond Anderson, aka Granny, but nobody else would call him Granny but me. It's an insider thing. But um, yeah, we have Desmond Anderson here with us today. Hi, Granny. <laughs> Hi, Kayvon. So I just want to talk a little bit about, I get to know Desmond a little bit about football. Um, it's the 50th anniversary of the athletics department. So we have here the KO boys which is what we call the original football players before it became a team. It was a club at first. So how does that, how do you feel now? You've been here since KO days. Uh, it feels good. It was kind of like crazy coming from just a club team and not really being recognized as a real sports team to uh, being a real team and actually contending in our conference and being ranked in the nation. So it's a great feeling. 
Did you ever feel, I guess, a waste of time, being that you weren't really playing outside teams? It was just scrimmaging you guys together back and forth? Uh, I don't feel like it was a race, uh, waste of time at all. It was more like a test run before the real deal uh, happened, kind of to see where we were at, how we were going to gel together as a team, and we definitely needed it. I would have been frustrated. I can't tackle the same guy every day <laughs> for like Monday through Thursday, three to six o'clock. That would be crazy to me. Uh, it gets annoying, but after a while, I mean, it's for a good cause. So what changes have you seen in yourself from then to now? Uh, as a person or as a player? You can say both, as a player first and then individually after. As a player, I've become more like knowledgeable of the game. Like I'm a, definitely a student of the game now. I don't just rely on my athletic abilities. I've learned more about the game itself as a whole. And as a person, I've just grown. I've matured, became more of a man than kind of the freshman college guy that I was when I first got here. You've been the, um, what is it? What do you call it? Yeah, you've been the captain for like how many years now? Three. That's great. <laughs> Good job. High five. High five. Um, aside from <laughs> football, what's your favorite, what's your favorite team? Uh, is football really your favorite sport or? Uh, mm. Is it something you're good at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at it, but I like basketball, honestly. So would you play basketball over football? If the opportunity presented itself, yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell Coach Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this. So what's your top three athletes, current athletes, like from now? Top three favorite athletes. It doesn't have to be football. It could be basketball, uh, soccer, whatever. It has to be current, like they play right now? Yes. Kobe, LeBron... Michael Phelps. Really? Yeah. Okay. Swimming is like one of the hardest sports you can do, and he's the most dominant swimmer out there. So, aside from current, overall in general, what would you pick? Deion Sanders. Next. After that. Michael Jordan. Emmitt Smith. Emmitt Smith? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm just saying, whatever, uh. whatever. So, um, aside from that, we're going to get into like personal life. I have like 30 seconds for you to answer these questions. Okay. 30 seconds. I'm going to say it, and you have to answer it quickly. Okay. All right, you ready? Beyonce or Rihanna? Beyonce. LeBron or Kobe? Kobe. Bryant? <laughs> Blue or purple? Blue. Lion King or Beauty and the Beast? Lion King. Lips or eyes? Eyes. Winter or summer? Winter. Sing or dance? Sing. Marry Jada or sleep with Hallie? Sleep with Hallie. <laughs> Bugatti or Aston Martin? Uh, Aston Martin. Wayne or Jay? Wayne. Bro or sis? Bro. Mom or dad? Dad. Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. You suck. <laughs> so thanks so much, Dez, for coming. I'm really excited that you were my first interviewee. <laughs> Thank you for having and me. And make sure you tell everybody to watch the show. I definitely will. All right. All right. Well, on to our next segment, Midnight Munchies. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first show of Midnight Munchies. I am here tonight. I'm Mariah Wheeler, and usually Brittany Amalfitano will join us, but she can't make it this evening. So instead, we have Oscar Guo with us, who's going to be show us, showing us some cooking ideas. Yep. And what are you going to be cooking tonight? Tonight, I'll cook you my very special spicy noodle. Spicy noodles. All yeah. right. Okay. Um, what this show is all about is teaching college students what they can use in their own dorms and make easily when they have the munchies at midnight. So let's get started. Okay, let me get my um, food. Okay, Oscar, so why don't you introduce some of the ingredients that we're going to be using. Okay, um, so these, like, um, the, th the whole thing is about the noodle that I have. I call it spicy noodle, but it actually has a Korean name. This is from Korea originally. It's called Shin Ren Yun noodle. So, and I need an egg to add some extra, um, ingredient to it so that will be make it more healthy and so is with so it is the same with this ingredient what do you call this again bok choy bok choy which we call yo tai in chinese yo tai in yo tai this is like grammar like two syllables vocab yeah yeah i know so uh let's get down to cooking okay the first part you do the to prepare the spicy noodle ingredient is to wash the bok choy which you break them into pieces like this and remove the very end thick part which is really not good when you eat that and then just wash it. Okay Oscar, now we're on to the next step with these noodles. So yep. what are you going to do with these? You turn on the oven to boil the water first. Okay. Okay. So, 
let's let our water boil for a little minute. And uh, the way I'm gonna do this is because a lot of Americans are not like a pseudo, like they don't eat very spicy things, do you? No. Okay, so the way I'm going to do is I try to control spiciness, but you can't really do that if you put the whole mm, spice pocket into the pot at once. So you're gonna so, do half? No, I'm gonna do it after we cook it. Oh. Which will taste exactly the same if you do it in the, at first. So. Wow, look at all these tricks. Yeah, and if you do that, you won't like uh, make your pot like a uh, smell very, you know, smelly. Oh. It's a good way to keep your pot clean too. And after that, uh, you turn the fire down a little bit, and you place this whole pack of dry noodle into it. At the same time, you pull, break your egg and just pour the raw egg into it. Thank you for John, who is my cameraman, that I should put the bok choy into it. Actually, at the time that when I put the noodle in it. At so the when you put the noodles in, you should also put the bok choy in. Yep. So after like uh, seven minutes, you try a little bit. Be careful, it's hot. Yes, it's ready. Okay. Noodly. All right, then it's done. This this noodle now is like flavorless, except for its own uh, noodle flavor. So that's this is the time where you pull all the seasoning into it. All right, so there you have it, guys. Oscar's original spicy noodles. So I hope all of you feel free to try this at home and tell us what you think of it. And um, we're gonna go and eat our noodles now. So join us next week. Bye. Hi. I'm Sean Malone and this is my partner Joe Brown. Welcome to the first segment of Sports Talk with Sean and Joe. We're going to talk about a very hot topic in sports this season in the NFL and that's Andrew Luck possibly going to the Colts. Right now the Indianapolis Colts are the last team in the NFL to get a win at 0-7 and are looking at the possibility of getting Andrew Luck in the draft this offseason. Joe, this offseason, say you're Colts GM, what would you do if you get the number one pick? I would draft Andrew Luck, no doubt in my mind. Peyton Manning is coming off of this uh, neck injury, and you don't know how many years he has left. He's also 35. And if you look at what happened with the Packers, Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for three years, and he learned the system, learned the plays, uh, sat behind one of the best quarterbacks ever, which is what Luck could do. And Luck is a higher talent scout-wise than Aaron Rodgers was, and Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. I, I agree with you completely. Peyton Manning didn't quite learn from b sitting behind someone, but I really think a quarterback like Peyton Manning, who just understands the game so well, knows how to make checks from one play to the next, would be a perfect quarterback to teach someone that has that natural ability of it, Andrew Luck. Now, another scenario that is a lot of people have suggested is the Colts trading Peyton Manning after they draft Andrew Luck. Would you agree with that? Would that be something you would consider if you were the Colts GM? Well, I don't really understand how they could trade Peyton Manning. I don't, uh, I don't see how it's possible for what a team's going to have to give up their entire team pretty much just to get him because he's worth a lot of money and a lot of talent. I could possibly see the Colts trading the first pick overall to, say, the 49ers for Frank Gore and a top defensive player or multiple picks in the future years or something like that and then have the Niners draft him and he could be draft luck and be with Harbaugh again but I don't see many teams having the option of getting Manning. I, I agree it would be tough and a lot of people would be using the Carson Palmer trade almost as a template except it would be much more valuable than Carson Palmer because this player wasn't automatically sitting out on his own will from the team. Peyton Manning wants to play for the Colts. Sometime this season he's still trying to come back uh, towards the end of the year. So I really think it, the price range would sit somewhere between maybe three guaranteed three first round picks. Uh, between uh, this season, this coming draft would have to be one of the first round picks and also in the future. Uh, some other teams that could draft Andrew Luck that are at the bottom. Uh, the Panthers are at the bottom of the barrel and the Dolphins are at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, in the NFL. The Panthers drafted Cam Newton, but would you see the Dolphins uh, drafting Andrew Luck this offseason? Uh, yeah, I think the Dolphins makes the most sense uh, of any team drafting Luck because the Colts are going to be reluctant because of Peyton Manning, and uh, the Dolphins might be, might be worse than the Colts at the end of the year. And I would look out for uh, the Redskins also. They have a, 
rough schedule up ahead, and they don't have a very good quarterback. And the Broncos, John Elway does not trust Tim Tebow, so they might lose a lot of games, possibly get that first spot, and draft uh, Andrew Luck. Fortunately for teams like the Dolphins, uh, the Broncos, and the Redskins you mentioned, there are a lot of good quarterbacks in the draft this year, uh, especially at the top of the draft. You have Landry Jones coming out of Oklahoma. You have Matt Barkley coming out of USC, a uh, three-year starter as a junior now. A lot of very good top quarterbacks, even some raw guys further down a little bit. You have Robert Griffith III coming out of Baylor. Many good quarterbacks this season. And that's going to wrap up our first segment now. I'm Sean Malone with my partner, Joe Brown. Thanks for tuning in to Sports Talk. What's going on, everyone? It's AJ from AJ Fitness, and I'm here to give you a quick spot on how to accelerate your fat loss through cardio. Just about every gym you visit, you will see a variety of cardio equipment. You will see elliptical machines, Stairmasters, and stationary bikes. My personal favorite is the treadmill. I enjoy the treadmill simply because I love to run. So when I want to accelerate fat loss on the treadmill, I will usually do 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity interval training five out of the seven days of the week. Running for an extended period of time will burn fat, but when you introduce certain intervals in your training, that fluctuation in speed and resistance will kick your calorie burn into high gear. I will usually start by walking on an incline of about six to eight percent at about four to five miles per hour. You will begin to target your calves, hamstrings, glutes, lower back, and you will even work your core because your core is what stabilizes your body in any type of movement. I will do this for about three minutes. Then I will go into a fast jog for about two minutes, then back to the incline walk. With this simple and easy cardiovascular exercise, you will definitely work up a good sweat and burn more calories in a shorter amount of time. Doesn't everybody want to look like AJ? So get out there and go work out. That's it for our show tonight, guys. I'm really excited, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure that you go on our Facebook page and thumbs up, and also go on the YouTube channel, um, College Late Night 11. And all, for all you YouTubers out there, subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment. Let us know what you think we should do better, what we should change, or just comment questions of the day. That's Ray William Johnson. Don't worry about that one. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.